Hello and welcome to Nara Gamer Gaming. This is Genosis, and today we have a prefab video for you about Alpha 19, uh, namely what new assets are available, a lot of new graphics and objects, as well as covering a topic that I may have missed throughout the series that may help some people struggling importing builds from survival mode to the prefab editor. All right, without further ado, let's take a look at all of these goodies. Let's get an aerial view of all this stuff. Now, this is probably maybe a good, I don't know, 90 plus percent of it. I uh, went through the um, creative mode. There is just so many pages of stuff now. I think th over 30, uh, 40 maybe. Well, because these are items at this point, but yes, yeah, 30 plus item or pages of things to play with. So many things. I actually almost missed this too. Look at this ductwork. There's a lot of complex shapes to get every shape you can imagine. A few bent ones for some. Uh, some stylizing and you can kind of create whatever shape you want with that stuff. I just threw a few together just to show what the what you can do with it. So the ductwork, that's going to be a lot more articulated enough to use weird shapes and paint them. You have the dedicated objects for it. All right, let's uh, start down the line here. We have a so our updated gore block. It looks a lot more haunting and grisly. I like it. Now we got some of these posts here. These uh, usually see these uh, stop vehicles. And then we got some uh, curved concrete blocks. And I really like these. These are new bunk beds. You can see there's an unmade bed version, made version, and uh, no sheet at all. So these are you find these in like barracks or just a normal bunk beds you find in a home. And here's here's kind of a fun one. Uh, these are wanted posters and are on some corkboard as well as uh, posted straight onto the wall. And if uh, you're familiar with the Seven Days to Die forums, you may actually recognize some of these people. Uh, we actually have a, there's a, one of the testers here I recognize. And there's probably others here. There's probably some other people, dogs. We got Kumquat, I believe he's one of the developers, or maybe a tester, I, and the name sounds familiar, as well as other people, and I'm sure they're related. Uh, then we got some backstory here. City vanished in blast of an atom bomb. Uh, you know, there's, uh, if you look around the epidemic, a lot of, you know, some lower stuff in there, which is kind of nice. Have to have you for humanity spring pic picnic. Uh, we have a crack book, uh, poster over here, a lot of those missing posters, uh, probably all the same ones in the corkboard. Got a diner menu, you can read the read it, old old cham sandwich, I guess. <laughs> Philly steak, you can read that on your own. Uh, Labor Day sale for some uh, tool shops. Uh, fuel your crush, mega body crush here. That's a, you know, crush note of, um, advertisement. Uh, some, you know, employee of mush washed hands, other notices. Uh, we have, I actually really like this one. Uh, this is a uh, kind of a safety checklist or safety charts and a lot of blood on it. We have got, I don't know what, seven days without an accident. See that? The II seven days. Put a little nod right there. This is just the back, backs of those. Uh, cigarette ad, that's nice. Uh, fresh, fresh breaked, bleh, God. Fresh bread, or um, can't even speak. Fresh bread signs, God. Get that out. Uh, I really like this. This is one of my favorite ones right here. Urinals. Proper urinals. Like, I've seen some really well-crafted urinals before. I think one of our community uh, wrecked dangerous if you're out there. Uh, you did a pretty good urinal, but I'm afraid you won't be able to beat this one, sir. Good try. Uh, now, we got some cabinets here with, with and without the uh, sink topper you can see in there. There's a object right there. It almost looks like a toilet seat. Um, we got some countertops. Uh, ones with holes in them, you can actually place that same countertop right there, and you can paint it however you like. And this is just a sink topper. All right, uh, let's move on to these. Another fantastic item. Yeah, I've got some freezers here for beverages and just normal food items. Uh, there's some that have loot, some do not. A Shamway Foods advertisement. We've got some sale posters. Uh, some bathroom signs, which is great because I've seen a lot of people putting up F's and M's and whatever else, uh, other indicators that is uh, for washrooms. But here we got some explicit signs, um, hanging, not hanging, and ones that are plastered direct on the wall. Here's some fun ones. We got some movie posters, some coming soon headers, and ones without the coming soon headers in the little glass, so it looks uh, more clear. <laughs> Sexual tension, mama's justice, lone wolf. And what do we got? Some guy running. <laughs> 2159. Okay, that's Horde Night, I guess. Right before it hits Horde Night. Cute. All right, here we got a new store. Mo Power Electronics. What's in your outlet? So he serves new electronics stores out there. We'll see some stuff from you'll see behind here. Then we got Savage Country. It's another new um, store available that has... It's kind of like a... Gosh, I'm not, much, not much sure what outlet stores you have where you are. Um, but it'd be like... 
sports stores and outlet stores selling hunting supplies and whatnot. All right, moving on. Uh, actually, hold on, let's go over. Yeah, actually, this is the back of it. We got lots and lots of clothing shelvings. All different types, types and colors, uh, empty shelves, half shelves. Uh, we've got clothing piles you can loot on the ground. Uh, hanging shelves with various items, empty shelves, racks, hanging racks, pants, um, you know, some racks with clothes underneath them, circular racks, and uh, oh, another cooler over here. But look at all those clothing shops, show, shopping items. You can put together a really convincing clothing outlet uh, store put together with that. And then here we have some electronics items, some store items. You'll find those in convenience stores, uh, little tool things. Yeah, more, it looks like tool, yeah, nails. So tool shops, electronic store stuff, some just generic items you can find, some electronics uh, trash, a new cash register and a scanner and a conveyor belt. Those are fun. Here's a new Savage Country crate um, related to that sign back there. Uh, and the related box of the loot. Something for the gun range, a lot of bolt holes in it. Also a lot of equipment racks for uh, guns and other kinds of loot. Just very nice looking detailed items here. Here are some mannequins. You know, you can make some creepy ass stuff with this. Just look at all these different parts and busts and locations. Like, imagine having these around corners, not expecting them. You can freak out a lot of your players with that. All right, we got some shoe racks, some individual shoe racks, different types of shoes, different angles, as well as some individual shoes. So you can put them at the front of a house with some very convincing items and some piles of shoes. Moving on to books, we get piles of books in various locations you can recognize. Some of them have, I think, magazines in them. Uh, yeah, Fire, uh, Fireman's Almanac back there. And some just probably some humorous titles. What do we got? Can I see that? Time Matters. Another Fireman's Almanac. A survivalist guide to making bank. <laughs> so a lot of things you can read, really detailed, a lot better than the painted ones we had before. Again, lots of different variations, magazine racks, and other things. Oh, um, I'll kind of splash this back here. Uh, kind of a medical pill signs, uh, small and large versions, I kind of stuck them back here. All right, and we'll see here is there's some new gold blocks you can place around. Uh, these are really good. I have actually put an arrow in more than a few of these. Uh, even this one, that is just grisly. I love it though. All right, now for grocery stores, we have some produce stands. Look at those, various fruits and veggies and everything else. You can make, a, again, convincing detailed stores. Uh, also some other uh, display shelves you can use here. Get some ammo cases with weapons and all that stuff. And some new, these aren't, I don't think these are new objects, but these are definitely new textures. Uh, I wouldn't want to, actually, I don't think that's new, but at least it's maybe redone or HD, I don't know. Some, uh, oh, here's a new one for sure. This is definitely new. I, this looks the most comfortable. Just wanna, I just wanna sit into that one. It actually looks very really clean too. So yeah, this, this, these are the items that you can play a lot with. You can add a lot of detail and, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, immersement or immersion, immersiveness, whatever. You can immerse your players into all your builds with all these new objects. Now that is all I had for the A19 update. I, I don't believe there's any other tools. I flipped through this a few times and I didn't see anything that stands out to me. That, so I don't think the editor itself has changed. Uh, if you found out something, by all means, let me know in the comments, but I certainly don't see it. All right, so that's the A19 update. Now for the second topic today, I'm gonna go into a survival map somewheres and I don't know, scrap together some kind of building just for our next, uh, our next lesson. All right, let's say that you've toiled long and hard at this new build. Uh, let me look at it. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely a sight to behold. And you don't want to lose all of that work, or you want to turn it into some kind of a dungeon for your friends to play through. Well, let's do that. So, yeah, so let's, uh, let's say this is some sort of fancy, massive build that you just want to put a lot of work into and uh, share with friends and you don't want to lose it. So it's in the survival map. It's in, you know, use creative mode or you built it by through survival. So what do you do now? Well, I'll show you. First, we go into DM. We actually were already in debug mode. Let's go back in. So we're going to hit God mode and we're going to select our build. So let's uh, start in an opposite corner, hit Z. This will place our blue selection block we've uh, done in another lesson. And I'm going to hold shift and press Z again in the opposite corner. I'm going to double check to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, oh, actually, we're going to miss our floor if we don't change our selection. So shift G to modify our selection. 
drag down, bam, we've done it. All right, so now that you've completely selected your POI and you're not sure, you're sure that you're not missing anything else, what we're gonna do now is hit escape and click export prefab. We're just gonna do underscore uh, prefab export test. And we're gonna save it locally. If you're not on a server right now, so that option's not highlighted, so we're gonna save it locally. Saved to that. Okay, so this is gonna be saved inside of your prefab folder within your seven days to die installation. So I can uh, maybe put it on the screen here. So it's in your seven days to die installation in data slash prefabs. Now you can sort that by time modified. Okay, now that we've exported it, it's actually changed location since I've last done this. It is going into your um, app data folder in roaming slash seven days to die. I can put a path on the, on the screen here or in the, in the description. And there's a new folder called local prefabs. Now that will have your prefab files. So we're gonna exit and go to our prefab editor. Okay, now that we're in the editor, we're in our uh, kind of map here. And I just wanted to point out something. This is something that has actually come up a few times in the comments. Uh, what's gonna happen if you go and there's no, nothing down here, you can plant place any blocks. So the place is completely clear. So let's start by making sure that when you start a new prefab, you go into this prefab browser, you hit create new prefab. It's guard only changes. Now by default, you should have this, but if you don't, it's called show ground level. So right now you can't place anything down, but you have to go into the third tab here, level tools two, and hit show ground. And this will actually be able to sh allow you to put blocks down on the ground or have a place to put your, uh, your prefab. I just wanted to show that up. So if we go through our browser here and we just type prefab, we have our prefab export test. Now this is from your user data path. So there's two locations, it's gonna pull your prefab files. And this is new for alpha 19, so I'm actually glad I covered this. So we can select this and, oh, uh, save changes now, discard changes. And if this looks familiar, this is what we exported from our survival world. So what we can do now is go ahead and drop a sleeper in here. Oops, I hope I type it correctly. Sleeper, here we go. Let's uh, kind of pop right in here, place a zombie. Uh, now we may need to make a quick, um, uh, we call it sleeper volume, there we go. All right, so that's probably overkill, so we'll just kind of shrink that down a bit. Uh, so that way, once you enter this area, that zombie will appear. Yeah, it looks about, well, that should be fine. Okay, so we're gonna hit K and we can have access to our sleeper volume. Um, well, this is only gonna really have one zombie and we're just gonna make it, psh, I don't know. Um, let's make it a burn zombie. Why not? And now we're gonna save this. Now, just to test this, there is, actually, this is another kind of a new thing. There is a uh, playtest button here. This is always here, but you can actually go back to the editor straight from the playtest. Let's, uh, let's check that out. All right, here we are in prefab testing. Uh, there's a little loot crate over here. You can go and grab some common items. I'm just gonna grab a quick pump shotgun because why not? Uh, here's Joel, so you can actually do some jobs here and test your uh, test your fetch quest or whatever else quest you have set up. Got my gun. All right, here is the prefab we just exported. And we should also have a zombie. Hey, fella. Fuck off. See that? Look at that. Squirt. And then we ask the little toilet here for some loot. And uh, there we go. We exported a build we've done in survival, placing blocks by hand, and we've created it into a prefab. Just like that. Simple as that. All right, I believe that's everything we have to cover for this episode. Um, I will show you one more thing before I, I jump out. Uh, if you go into debug mode, you hit escape, we can actually return back to the editor. So let me click that right now. All right, we're back in the prefab mode here and we don't have a floor beneath us. We can fix that quickly. Shazam. And we can even correct something that we noticed there was a problem. We can go ahead and uh, move the ground level up. So that way when the prefab is tested, this will appear a level. And uh, you can also resize this if you need to. All right, that's it. That's how you export a prefab from your survival map into Prefab Editor and create your own prefabs you can share with your friends. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to drop into the comments. I will do my best to answer all of your questions and hit me up on Discord if you'd like to discuss it directly with me. 
All right, this has been Genosis, and I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you learned something, you liked what you saw here today, please press that like button. It does help with the video, and subscribe if you have not already. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.